Good evening, everyone. I hope you can see and hear me okay. Let me just spotlight this video for a second. You are very welcome to another installment of All About DCU, our weekly webinar. My name is Sinead McCrowan, and I am delighted to be back for another week um, of this series. So we run this every Thursday evening as a way to inform prospective students about the various um, facilities and courses that we have on offer here in DCU. So some weeks we cover um, the 70 plus undergrad courses we have on offer. Some weeks we cover the student experience and other weeks we bring in different offices from the university to talk about what they offer um, in terms of say um, accommodation. So last week we had people from the accommodation office on to talk about the application process. A couple of weeks before that we had representatives from the Here and the Dare scheme attend and this week I am delighted to welcome Paul O'Brien from DCU Sports and Wellbeing who is going to be talking about sports scholarships in DCU and how to go about applying to them. So what I'm going to do now is uh, promote um, Paul to a panelist so hopefully this works for me. It's always a leap of faith to see if this is going to be a success. Hey, Paul. Hi, Sinead. Thanks a million. How are you? No problem. I'm going to add the spotlight to your screen so that people can um, make sure that they can see everything OK. Do you have the ability to share screen there, Paul? I do. I do. I do. Oh, I, not yet, actually. OK, I'm going to allow that for you now. Make you a co-host. Paul, thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening to come and do this presentation today. I know you're a very busy man, um, but there are a good few students tuned in today who I'm sure are really looking forward to hearing about everything sports related in DCU. So um, just before we get started, I will draw everyone's attention to the Q&A function that's listed below. Um, so if you have any questions at all um, throughout the presentation, maybe they can pop them in there, Paul, throughout. And then yeah. when you get to the end, you can kind of cover them off. Um, and we can answer myself and my colleague Margaret are here if there are any questions that aren't really sports related, but maybe about courses or points. Um, and we can chat to students about that as well. So I'm going to mute myself and turn my camera off. And over to you, Paul. Thanks. Thanks a million, Sinead. Um, yeah, so just listen to Sinead talking there at the start, I suppose this links in really well with some of the talks that have been on in previous weeks. If, if people have attended them in terms of linking in, there'll be, there'll be talk of accommodation. And I suppose a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is around the whole student experience and, and the impact and the part sport has to play in DCU and that, that overall student experience that it isn't just the, the lectures that, that are occurring, that it's very much um, everything is brought together for, for the whole package during your, your time in DCU. OK, and um, so I suppose in, in getting to it, um, one, one of the elements of, of, of the DCU strategy is, the, is the, the focus it puts on the student experience and the, and, and the ability sport has to affect that is massive. Um, I suppose on screen here, and, and this will be a theme throughout the presentation where just the value and the impact sport has and the relationships that can be de developed. Um, on the left hand side of the screen there, hopefully there isn't too many people from, from Mayo present, um, but um, this is a picture from 20, 2013 of Rob Henley and Johnny Cooper and Dublin had just won um, won an All Ireland at that stage. Johnny Cooper's first All Ireland, but his his initial reaction upon winning the winning the All Ireland was to go to his then classmate Rob Henley to console him. And I suppose it's really poignant from the perspective that they spent they were they were in third year at the time. They spent a lot of time working alongside each other. Sorry, fourth year at the time, working alongside each other, going to the gym, working in group projects together, and developing real strong relationships as they're, they're I suppose, striving towards the same thing and um, just with different jerseys on. And then on our right hand side, we've Grace Kelly and Neve Kelly. Neve Kelly's in the yellow DCO jersey. That's a picture from 2018 of, of an O'Connor Cup final that DCU won. Um, so so Neve won in, in her final year in DCU. Grace, her sister, had previously won too. So she was she was ahead in the in, in the stakes at that particular stage. But this picture kind of sums up the uniqueness of, of third level sport that sisters or family members or club mates who across different sports are always, I suppose, teammates and working with each other, that they can come up against each other in the third level environment, because as you know, people people end up in college and in different parts of the country. So a unique enough environment to, to be having. Um, and it just kind of gets back to the, the strong relationships that, that are built in sport. 
Um, so obviously there hasn't been a huge amount of third level sport, unfortunately, um, over over the last twelve months. Um, but in both 2019 and 2020, DCU was the, the Student Sport Ireland uh, Sports College of the Year. Something we're massively proud of from the perspective of it's not just based on the elite, it's based on both participation and performance. So I suppose within DCU, we put a real emphasis on trying to excel at both and not just be, be, be aligning to one side. Um, there's, there, there's a few pictures there of, of, of the Collingwood Cup, some successful athletes, successful handballers. And the, the main picture there is, is a picture of a Horland team. And the reason I have that up and, and, and bigger than the other ones is it's an interesting story that on March 12th last year, so we're, we're, we're nearly the full 12 months into, into COVID at this stage, this team were on a bus on the way to Tullamore to play an All Ireland final against UL, and in furious phone calls back and forth between myself and, and my counterpart in UL at the time, and with the, the the government announcement that just that that was just being broken at that stage, it was decided that the game couldn't go ahead for for safety and I suppose not knowing what what was to come in the future, and that final wasn't played and will never be played now at this stage. But to a large extent, it doesn't really matter because the job and the task we kind of set ourselves with, with students coming in is to give them an identity as a DCO student, get them involved with friends and get them involved in enjoying their, their sport alongside their education, be it just in the participation level or with a lot of these fellas really excelling on. And, and the thing that really sticks out to me is I, I see this team as a success, a massive success because they became best mates and the winning or losing of a final wasn't really relevant when, when, when we'd gotten that far. And the kind of thing that sticks out with me is in November time, 14 of these lads decided to, to book a trip of their own volition over to Budapest for when they finished their exams in January. So that friendship a, is a massive part of what happens in, in tour level sport. And it's something that's, we really, really put a lot of emphasis on in terms of what we're doing. So I suppose a lot of in sixth year at the moment and looking at coming in, and I suppose we're very hopeful that we'll have a, a, a proper level of activity come September when you arrive in as a first year with, um, with, with competitions and, and, and leagues back running. And the great thing about all the sports in DCU is that they are student run and student led and each club has their own committee that's made up of students, be it a chairperson, secretary, PRO, treasurer, their students who run it. There's a lot of coaching opportunities as well. While we do have external coaches coming in, working with, with, with some of the of our, of our focus sports um, and, and, and helping them because I suppose they're, they're used to a really high level of coaching. We also give massive opportunities for people to come in and engage on a coaching level when they're in DCU. Um, and we're looking forward to kicking off in September and, and it being a really vibrant place again, thankfully. Um, so in terms of facilities and, and what we have to offer, we have four pictures up here and I'm gonna start in the top right-hand side. That's a picture of our, our 3G Gaelic Games pitch uh, on the on the sports campus over in St. Clair's. So over there we have we have three Gaelic Games pitches, um, two of them floodlit, and and then one that isn't floodlit. We have a soccer pitch. We've um, we have a soccer pitch. We have a rugby pitch as well. We have a kind of a, we have a, we have a long distance cross country track, and then additional to that we have. Um, a sprints track and we have jumping jumping and throwing areas as well over there as, as well as as well as a gym down in the bottom left hand corner we have our our new 3g pitch in on st patrick's campus unfortunately this only opened in in november so there's been limited enough activity on it so far but but as i said again come come september it is it is literally a case of stepping out of, of a lecture or, or the canteen onto the pitch which is fantastic to have such a great facility so close to the classrooms the the opposite diagonal then up the top on the on the left hand side we have a picture of the the sport the gym in 
on the glass Nevin campus um, and then the bottom right hand side bottom right hand corner we have the pool and we have a, a, a jacuzzi and a sauna area in the down there as well in the glass Nevin campus one of the things is and we're going to talk about it in a second if you're on sports scholarship or you're involved with one of the focus sports teams um, coming in as a first year you'll get entry and access free gym membership to to the facilities on be it the glass Nevin or be it the St. Patrick's campus whatever and it's massively important because I suppose looking at it from a school perspective you're in school and it's pretty much nine o'clock till four with, with no real break. College is a little bit different depending on the course in terms of the layout of the day. And you could have two or three hours off and to have such high quality facilities on your doorstep right beside student accommodation is massively important in making sure you fully utilize your, your, your full day. Um, so I suppose a number of people are probably interested in the, in the performance sports programs. Um, so, all colleges do things differently, and in DCU we have we have two schemes. Okay, um, we have two schemes. We have the CEO points concession scheme, and we have the sports scholarship scheme. And rather than me talking about it, I'm just going to put a video on for for a minute and a half of some of our sports scholars. Some of them are just recently graduated, talking about what what there is to offer in DCU. DCU Sports Performance Programme has been a great help to me over the last four years. From gym membership and access to DCU Sports Grounds to academic supports over the four years, the programme has really helped me to perform at my best on and off the field. The DCU Sports Performance Programme has helped me develop in many ways, from access to gym and pool facilities for strength and conditioning and top class coaching to bring my performance on the pitch to a better level, to both academic and financial support, which have helped keep stress levels low during my time in DCU. DCU Sports Performance Programme has had a massive impact on me as a student athlete. Having the ability to live on a student campus has you close to the library, all your lectures and the gym for strength conditioning and recovery after games. The DCU Sports Performance Programme helped me massively, in particular with academic support. In second year I struggled with a module and through this programme I was entitled to academic support. Honestly, can't be thankful enough for everything that DCU has done for me. So that's just um, Ashling, Hannah, Evan, and Rory giving a bit of an insight into what uh, what what supports are there um, across the various programs. Okay. So to, to talk for us, I'm going to talk about the CEO points concession scheme first. Okay. And what the CEO points concession scheme does, right? So I, I I'm I'm going to use an example um just to give you give you an idea rather than trying to talk around it. So we'll say someone is looking to do um business studies. Okay. So we'll say business studies maybe around 465, 470. Obviously it can go up and down in any particular year. And I suppose there's a there's a good bit of fluctuation in CEO at the moment. But say the CEO said it was 470 points to get into business studies. If you've applied through this scheme. And you have it's it, it's online now, and I, I I'm going to briefly show how to get to the form at the end. If you apply and, and you get you get through to the the next stage, if you fall somewhere between we'll say four seventy and four four five in that twenty five point range, you could potentially get it onto that course on that reduced points. Okay, and. We'll say a course like business studies has a number of places available on it because it's quite a large course. Same with the B. Ed. and similar with with a lot of the 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 courses that have a large amount of um, places on it. Smaller courses like global business would only have one. Global business you were saying might only have one spot. Um, P. and biology it only have two. It, it is quite a competitive scheme, but it is available on every course in DCU. OK, and I, I, I would very much be telling people who, who meet the criteria and the criteria is all online and um, to, to apply for it. And I suppose the criteria that's online is very much a, a baseline criteria. Um, and we do get do get some really high level students and um, students looking to apply, you know, and um, but it's a great scheme because it does 
allow people who are trying to balance both the sports and the academics to still get their their course of their choice um, moving on then to the the sports scholarships and the supports that are there and um, yeah so there, there's a number of supports there and um, there's a financial bursary support that that's there and um, as, as i mentioned already there's membership to the gym and dcu and we also give access to strength and conditioning programs individualized strength and conditioning programs to students and um, if they need it if they're not being um supported with it with, by their ngb or their their club or their county or internationally or whatever it is and um, we we do offer a number of sports science supports then as well that I suppose are tailored towards a particular athlete. And um, we do a lot of mentoring, we've top class coaching um, and there's access to, to, to really high level competitions. But I suppose one of the things that's really, really important from my perspective is the academic support we provide. Okay, so I'm gonna again use the business studies example just, just because, just because it, it kind of it kind of works at the moment. So, say you come in to do business studies and you haven't done accounting or economics for the leave insert. You might find one of them subjects difficult enough in first year, and um, simply because you haven't got the grounding in them. And when you get to third level, they try and accelerate the learning fairly quickly, get you up to a, a base level, and then accelerate on. We would provide support in that. Equally, somebody might come into sports science or they might come into athletic therapy and training or P and biology or P and maths. Many of the many of the subjects really in the in, in, in the science faculty and they mightn't have done physics or chemistry for the leave insert and getting the support of them with, 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 with an individualized tutor or a small group tutor through the through the sport and well-being department can be a massive, massive help in that student who might be traveling all about the place, um, be it be it nationally or internationally, it, it, it's a great help in, in trying to support them in their, in their academic work. So there's just an example of some um, performance sports students we've had in previous years. Unfortunately, they are a number of years old now because we haven't had many pictures in the last year. Um, and here's, I suppose, Here's a picture of, of kind of a number of, of students who've been successful in uh, well different levels of success in the last week and um, on on the in the last ten days we'll say on, on the left hand side Sarah Rowe um, is is excelling she she graduated two years ago in in P and biology and is, is excelling out in AFL AFL women's in Australia at the moment Ashley Maloney then you probably recognise her from. The, the recent little lad, there's, a, there's a quite a number of DCU students are in that. She's going into her final semester of PE and biology now. And um, in, in, in the middle there, we've Nadia Power, who um, was successful again, only as recently as last night, when she broke her own Irish 800 metre record. Um, as she's getting very, very close to the break in the two minute mark for 800 metres. And then Tyg Forlong, a, 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 a graduate of um, business studies, um, was playing with Ireland at the weekend. Unfortunately, they weren't successful, but Ty, Ty Forlong is, is, is excelling there in the front row. Just coming back to Nadia for a second, actually, Nadia is doing Mint, and one of the things for people who are operating at a really high level, um, we, we have an, an academic flexibility problem, so she kind of staggers her education over a number of years to make sure she can train at the appropriate level internationally, try and uh, um, I suppose tracking towards the Olympics while also making progress on her on her academics in, in, in a gradual basis. So that's something that we do and, and, and is really beneficial in, in, in helping the athletes who have different um, different pressure points in terms of competition, etc. Um, so this picture here, again, it's a year old at this stage, but I, I suppose these are all students who were Gaelic Games All Star nominations last year. I haven't updated it this year because uh, Lady Swoopon and Camogie, because of COVID, aren't actually releasing nominations um, this year. But I suppose in, in a given year, we typically have th th this large amount of, of students and alumni who have been successful. And the reason I have it up is a lot of these people actually lived in, in House 15 
um, in, in, in DCU, in, in College Park, where there's an environment where students live together um, who are excelling at sport, be it Gaelic games, athletics or other sports, and, and I suppose are learning off each other and creating a really high performance environment where they're constantly looking to excel. Um, and we do have in House 14 for athletics, House 15 for Gaelic games, and then other sports um, have a number of rooms in both houses where we, I suppose, look to try and assist students who are coming in with rooms, rooms in them house so they can learn off the, the students who are, who are two, two or three years ahead of them on their pathway. So that's kind of it in terms of a presentation. You'll see there um, my name, Paul O'Brien, the, the head of Gaelic Games. Paul Bourne is the head of athletics and Yvonne McGowan then is over all the other sports. And there's our email addresses. What I would say is for both Paul and Yvonne, I'm not too sure if, if their phone numbers are actually linked to their, to their mobiles at the moment, but there's my mobile. Feel free to contact me with, with any questions or whatever, or pop us an email. Um, so kind of that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a new share. Okay, I'll give you this a second. Um, so um, I'm actually just going to go back out to Google for a second. So. Um, where do the application forms for the, the performance sports programs come from? Really simply, if you just go to DCU performance sports, type that into Google, it's pretty much the first thing that comes up there about performance sports. So this will bring you to the DCU website, it gives you a bit of indication there. You can learn a little bit more about CEO points and session and the sports scholarships um, there. And how to apply is pretty much just click on that on that tab and click here, and then we're filling out our details here. What I would say is for a sixth year, there's no real reason why you take CEOs, points concession or sports scholarship, just click both programs. So it's looking for generic enough information, email, name, CEO, date of birth, address, and um, the couple of courses you're looking to do. And um, if you're a current student, so obviously all you are not so just click not currently a DCU student, click your sport and give a bit of an update on your team, etc. what level you played at. Um, and then list your, your sport and achievements in the last three years. So typically we're probably only interested in the last 18 months and in standard circumstances. But what I would say is do include up to the last three years because I suppose we, we're not fully aware of like obviously people haven't been involved in a lot of competition over the last 12 to 18 months now at this stage. What are your aims for the, the next four years in DCU? So just talk about excelling academically and sporting wise at the same time and how you're, and then provide an explanation to support how you'll impact sport in DCU. There, just talk about how you're looking to, I suppose, use the facilities in DCU and, and, and build DCU success through, through your performance, etc. And um, we don't need actual references, um, written references, just name, title, phone number, and email address. It'll be fine and submit that. And you have until the, the 1st of May to submit that. So that's pretty much where we are. So we have um, two questions so far. So how strongly does hockey feature in DCU? Yeah. So Within DCU, we have um, actually the head and um, the course director of sports science and health, David Passmore, is, is involved as an international coach with Ireland, and he works very closely with individual athletes that come in. And um, we don't have our, our team in hockey aren't excelling. They're not operating at the same level as some of the other universities. Um, but it, I, 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 th there is there is teams there that you can play on and, and, and they're involved in the in the national inter interversities. Um so um what is the view of DCU of basketball as a sport? Yeah so these uh, basketball is, is again one of the strong sports in DCU. It's 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 one of the tiered uh, sports that receive support in DCU where we have like 
we have a, a, a particularly strong female team. We also have a strong male team. And we also have an external team who are involved in DCO, DCO Mercy, um, with Rob Ingle as a coach. And I suppose we've, we've had a number of actual international athletes from America who have been involved in the past number of years. So that is, um, that's something that's, that's massively important as well. And there's a lot of emphasis goes on the basketball side of things. Um, question there should i apply for scholarship points concession if i'm unsure that i will get it 100 percent. we have we have a, a rigorous process where we assess applicants but it's very much if you're not in you can't be you can't be selected so um like the worst thing that could happen is that you wouldn't be successful you know so i would say to definitely apply um can you still play in a high level if you didn't get a scholarship yes and I suppose within our teams, um, in, in all sports, we have teams that are operating at a very high level, and then we have teams that are operating on a recreational level. And there is the opportunity to, to play at whatever level you're, you're capable of playing, you know? Um, and that, that opportunity is, 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 is certainly there. Um, now, can you play... Here's a really good question. Can you enter a scholarship in later years if your standard improves? Yes is the answer to that. Our scholarships are awarded on a yearly basis. So a student doesn't come in and is on a scholarship automatically for four years. It's based on them progressing over the course of their time, their, their years on a year to year basis. Um, so you could come in as a first year and not receive support, but then receive it in subsequent years. Equally, you could come in on a in first year, and if you don't, if you don't excel, um, if you don't excel, um, during your time, you could you could lose your your scholarship support in in, in subsequent years. Um, can you enter a scholarship in the late years if you improve standards? Yeah, that's done. Um, does DCO subsidise or completely cover accommodation costs? Yeah, so it's a subsidy. Um, it's a subsidy that you'd receive rather than full accommodation costs uh, covered. Um, have there been any successful soccer graduate graduates? And does the college play in, at a high level? Um, yeah, Yana. So at the moment, DC are actually Collingwood Cup champions. Um, so we won that in March, not March, February 2019. Obviously, it didn't. Sorry, February 20, 2020. And um, we, we won the Collingwood Cup for the first time in our history. And um, in, in, in terms of successful soccer graduates, Amber Barish, who was on, on the female side of things, is, who's currently over in, um, who was over in Dusseldorf in Germany, in Germany, with one of the professional soccer teams in Germany anyway. She's a recent graduate. Um, Rory and Kevin Feely as well. I'm sure there's many more. I just can't think of them off the top of my head at the moment. Um, but yes, we're we're operating at a high level. When are scholarships announced? Approximately how many per annum for each type? Yeah, so it varies depending on sport. Um, so in terms of the points concession, a student would find out. Um, a student would find out if they're successful in advance of coming to DCU. So they'd find out. They effectively find out when their CEO offers are released in, in mid-August or or whatever stage that's going to be this particular year. And then the the sports scholarship support for the sports where it's, it, it's easy enough to assess like athletics or individual sports where it's based on time or achievements, individual achievements, they're given out early in in kind of when when the, when a student starts in September, whereas on the Gaelic games or, or the soccer side, they're not given out until a little bit later in the year because it can be quite difficult to assess the 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 different applicants. Um, so that answers that. Um, so how many places for a scholarship in, in ladies Gaelic football? Yeah, so pretty much the majority of the O'Connor Cup panel would be would be supported with, with financial support. Um, I suppose going from we say Ashton Maloney operating at a gold level 
to to students operating at that bronze bursary level as well. And um, so pretty much the whole panel of of close to thirty girls would would, would be supported um, at, at at varying levels from gold, silver, and bronze. Um, and yeah, so yeah, I suppose in terms of should I input losses um, when when asked for achievements in the last three years or solely wins, include it all because um, oftentimes in, in sport it's the it's the near misses and, and and the losses that are actually more beneficial at times than the win so I would include reference to all them there yeah um, is there a hockey pitch on campus no there isn't a hockey pitch on campus um, is playing into county football or ground for James so um, yeah so um, w one of the things there is is playing into county football requirement for GA scholarship and if so would you apply if you haven't played into county football in the last year apply anyway and I'll tell you why because we are we're, we're working through our processes at, at the moment to deal with with potential students who have have missed out on a little bit of sport over the last year so we are aware that students have missed out on opportunities over the, the course of the last six months and um, so yes if, if you were involved in previous years include that and um, question there when applicants apply for a gaelic games scholarship will low level club make a huge impact even if played in the county absolutely not and one of the main reasons why we wait till later on in the year to assess the sports scholarship support is because we're we're looking for to, to make sure there's no biases come into play by a person who's in, in a strong county or with a strong club. So it's very much based, the Gaelic game side is based on how someone goes with, with DCU. Are dorms or occupation paid for? they're subsidized they're not fully paid for it um what is the minimum the minimum requirement for basketball off the top of my head i actually don't know the answer to that question but if you email yvonne.mcgowan at dcu.ie and ask her about the minimum re requirement for basketball she'll be able to let you know exactly what the minimum requirement for for basketball is our scholarships awarded. So our our scholarships awarded to people attending St. Pat's campus for primary teaching. Yes, absolutely. Every single course that is a DCU on the CEO, a student could potentially get scholarship on that and potentially get CEO points concession for that. So that's absolutely that's that's perfect as well. There's no differentiation between to, between any sport. Is there a certain criteria needs to be met for someone looking to apply for either? Yeah, so a certain criteria needed. Yes, so they're all included on that on that area of the DCU website that um that I I I showed you earlier on. Um, there's there's stuff on on the criteria there. Um, and, and we're flying. Um, how does DCU work with counties and training between each team? Yeah, so it, it's very much um, strong relationships are built with the counties and between um, managers of DCO teams and, and, and county teams and work towards trying to empower a student to develop their communication skills as well is something that's massively important there. And I suppose we very much operate a philosophy where we are making sure that we we imp we empower students to make the right decision for themselves, and um, and there's there's no situation where we'll say any any player will be said oh, don't play with a county or don't play with a club or don't play with this external activity. It's very much we work towards trying to to help everyone out to out together. So any more questions there?
Almost bang on time there, Paul. I know you have to head off shortly for uh, another meeting. So maybe we'll give one more second for a couple of questions. But oh my God, you got through almost 20 questions there yeah. along with your presentation. So fair play. Um, I think for anyone listening in today, like as you mentioned, Paul, no, no matter if you're just playing sports for fun, you know, the, you know, all the way up to, you know, playing or playing for Ireland or whatever, you know, there's lots of ways to get involved. Um, and of course, apply for a sports scholarship as well. So there's one more question come in there. How do you get tested on your scholarships? How do you get tested on your scholarships? I don't exactly know what you mean by that. If you just want to add another little bit on that, so if you mean bay, if you mean assessed, and um, we would we would engage with your referees that you, you submit. We'd also engage with your your results that you've you've achieved, um, externally. And also then we'd be we'd engage with NGBs and then other people who, who are around the country in our in our network of in our network of, of support, support staffs, etc. I think that's so, bang yeah. on the money, Paul. Yeah. 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 How is it assessed? Um, Paul, thank you so much for that super insightful uh, look into kind of sports in DCU. Um, as, as you mentioned there at the presentation, your uh, contact detail is paul.o'brien. Um, yeah. GAA is not dcu.ie and if people want to send on any queries to you directly I'm sure they're more than welcome to do that or guys the link that or the email address that you got the link from for today's webinar student help at dcu.ie if you even want to reply to that email with any questions over the coming weeks and we can make sure to get in touch with Paul then if anything comes in as well as that this session was recorded today so if anyone wants to watch something back this will also be on our website um, and if there are any more queries coming in any, any last words Paul before you go off to your next meeting yeah no I'm after including my email address there Sinead and a pretty much open any, anyone who, who who needs any assistance just get in contact with me no matter the sport and I'll either help you myself or, or pass you on to somebody else um, and we're all we're always really keen to to try and help six years make the the right decision for for themselves because i suppose it saves it saves problems if if they they arrive in and, and they don't like the course like I, I have no problem linking people in with existing sports scholars who are doing a particular course that you might be thinking of doing so exactly. anyone yeah, lots of lots of chances there to kind of network and to speak with people who have um, been through the process already. And um, so for anyone listening who might be interested in courses and um, then Paul mentioned some of them today or campuses or student life and other supports that are there outside of just sports and DCU. And we'll be back next week with our kind of full presentation about all of our offerings for undergrad. So make sure to tune in next week if that's something you're interested in. But Paul, thank you very, very much for all of that. Enjoy the rest of your evening and thanks everyone for tuning Lovely. in. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, Emil. See you, bye. See you. Bye-bye.